But this is our first actual family cooking night, and thanks mm -hmm. to Barbara, we uh, coordinated this back in Jeez, last as April of last year. Exactly. And so Barbara said, you know what I really want to do? I want to give the Watson family, the Watson School family, and the Doran mm -hmm. School um, an opportunity to have this program that we've been doing in Brockton for the last like 15, 16 years. So we really put on a, a performance of cooking. And we have, um, so my name is Andrea Galesian. Hi, um, hi, how are you? And um, hi. I'm the project leader for the SNAP Ed program in um, the Southeast. This is Lindsay McGann. Miss M, for those of you that have her. Miss M, <laughs> had her in the classroom, and she is so much fun. When I observed Lindsay in the classroom, I wanted to stay in there because it was so much fun. And this is Sue Laughlin. Hi, Mrs. Sue Laughlin. Mrs. Laughlin. And she is like the greatest thing. When she entertains the kids, she's so <laughs> nurturing and so warm, and her information is great too. So we have you have the two best educators you could possibly ask for in the school. They are teaching your kids, if you have kids in grades K, one, two, and three now. Your children, your students, are having an opportunity to learn. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in K. I'm in K. You're in K? So did you have Miss Miss, Miss, Miss Laughlin or Miss McGill? No, no, I, no, I had Miss Seaman. That's his teacher. That's his teacher. Have, have you, you've been here, right? Yeah. You've been in Watson, okay. I taught that class. You taught that class. Yeah. Okay, well, that's who, you, who taught you. But they're oh, teaching these yeah. your kids all about healthy eating, the right choices to make, go slow woe foods, um, so in my plate, how to get more physical activity in your day, and um, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, so you're getting it all. So you're, you're really, really, really hopefully um, enjoying that, that program. So this is something that we've added to it, and um, the, cookie, the family cooking night event is we're going to be showing you some ideas for home cooking, um, how to pick foods that are on your plate, I'm <laughs> sweetheart, how on your plate um, in the right amounts, the right portions, and the right and, and the variety that you need, without spending a lot of extra money, with finding foods that are within a budget and making portions the right size, so you're not spending extra money on on foods that you don't. That, that, that doesn't do that don't do anything to make your body healthy. So that's what we're here for. We're really trying to challenge you to you know uh, enjoy go foods as much as you can. So without further ado, I think we're going to start our cooking demonstration. You want to get uh, and uh, we, well, no, actually we're going to start this PowerPoint with yep. some questions. So Lindsay has some information. Some that's right. Tips today on shopping for you at home. So we call this supermarket savvy. And uh, we're going to give you some recipes and some ideas of how to save money on that stuff. So, first, I have a question for you all. I'm going to have a few questions for you all. And we're going to try to do this digital thing, but we can't. So I've got some ideas of how to have you guys answer questions. So I'm going to ask you a question, and then there's going to be four answers, and there are actions that are based on the answer if you think that you believe one of them. So the first thing I want to know is how many times do you guys think the average American visits the grocery store in a year? Is it going to be A, 34 times? If you think it's 34 times, I'm going to raise your hand. We have to that, right? Yeah, like six, seven, eight, If you think it's 56 times, I want you to raise your hand. If you think it's 88 times, I want you to drop your Get up and drop your And if you think it's 134 times, I want you to lower the floor. Down for that. I know. Uh, so the first thing you need to understand. 
like is how a grocery store is laid out, okay? Um, they design the stores so that they can make you spend the most money because of course that's their goal, is to make more money. So they put their product displays, 73 on average in a regular grocery store, they put their product displays everywhere. You've seen that. Okay. The stuffs that are on the end cap, that's the end of the aisle, that's usually the stuff they're going to make the most money on. It's not usually on sale. If you notice, those are the things that are usually like brand names, not uh, their actual store name. Of the lighting, sometimes like, especially the meat department, they, uh, they actually put in like blue lights to make the meat look more red and less gray. I don't know why, but it just looks better from when you're looking at it. So sometimes they can light the display a different way so that it makes it look more appealing than it might actually be. They play slow tempo music so that when you're walking through with your carriage, maybe you walk slower and you look at more food, so you buy more food. And also the products that are at eye level are usually the most expensive, so you guys want to kind of take a look up and down to see different options instead of the stuff that's right there in front of you. The easier, the more that you're going to buy. So let's give you some skills to use in case you know you don't want to be trapped in this supermarket scam, as I'd like to call it. One, make a list. How many times do you go to the grocery store and you don't make a list? You come back with everything but what you needed. Right? You gotta make sure you make a list. So first, decide what you're gonna make. Know what meals you're gonna make that week. If you're gonna be serving snacks in lunch boxes, right? Put all that stuff on that list. What foods do you already have? Do you need to buy more? No. Would you already yes. have enough crackers this week? And what else could help you to save money before you get there? When you make your list, um, you want to list the foods that you need to prepare your foods and snacks. You want to put the type of food, the form it's in, if you need a fresher pan. Uh, you want to put the same kind of food together because you don't want to be walking around with a crazy person all around the store. So put all like, your produce together so you don't have to go and get dairy first and go back. And um, plan the time to go to the grocery store like after you've eaten so that you don't go in and want to eat everything that's on the shelf. Because that happens to me. I, I would say I'm pretty guilty of that myself. So, here's my next question. Same way. Okay. In a recent Cornell study, how much more junk food Will you likely buy when shopping hungry compared to those shop, shopping with a full stomach? So how much more junk food do you think you're going to buy if you went hungry to the store? Do you think it's 5%? Do you think it's 12%? Do you think it's 18%? Oh, oh, what's or do you think it's 23%? Lower the floor. What do you guys think? What do you think? She's huh? lower the floor. Are you ready? It is 23 percent. That's a lot of food to buy extra just because you're hungry. That's 25. Right. If you spend 100 dollars, which I think a lot of us end up spending, if you spend close to 25 bucks on extra food, you didn't probably buy. So make sure that you have a snack before you go to the store. We give you some examples of healthy snacks. We're going to talk a lot more about that as our time goes on. Uh, but you, you have some ideas if you were thinking of something, you can check out our list. You want to check your label because, like, how do you know what's healthy that you're buying? We're going to be talking about that today, too. So you want to read the nutrition facts and the ingredients to compare your foods. Uh, you want to look and see what has lower grams of fat, so less fat, less sugar, less cholesterol, which is that like nasty fat that gets stuck in our veins. Uh, sodium, which is salt. You want to have higher fiber and whole grains listed as the first ingredient when you're looking at grain group foods. They're going to have more fiber in them and they're going to make you less hungry. Also, unit pricing. It amazes me how many people have no idea what unit pricing is. So you see a tag like this and you go to the grocery store. There's like an orange spot or a yellow spot and then the rest of it. Uh, what the unit price is, is it shows you, say you're going to buy, I think this is yogurt. If you use yogurt all the time, instead of buying a little container of yogurt, you could buy the big thing. But is it worth your money? Well, if you're going to use it, the answer is probably yes. But you need to look and see the unit price to see if it is actually worth your money. So, you take a look. We got a 32 ounce yogurt and a 6 ounce yogurt. Obviously the 6 ounce yogurt is a lot cheaper, but um, you get a lot more in the yogurt. 
So, if you're taking a look at it, which one's cheaper? If you're going to use it, the five cents per ounce, you're going to be paying a lot less. The other one, you're paying more double price per ounce of yogurt. And it does, it's not even just yogurt. It's and that unit price is always the same. You want to check that if it's something you're going to use or something that's not going to go bad. Also, the inside of the store is like a booby trap. Anything that's on the outside, that's going to be your best option. It's going to be the healthiest stuff for you. It's going to be cheapest in the long run. The stuff that's on the outside, meaning the produce, the milk and cheese, all the stuff that's in the coolers, they're all on the outside. All the stuff that's in the mill, it's all the junk. All of that is jammed in there. Every once in a while, you might need some stuff in there. That's why you make your list. So that you're only going in there for the stuff that you need. So you get your meats on the outside, the bakeries on the outside, everything that's on the outside is far less processed because it doesn't come in a box. Everything on the side comes in a box, okay? So that stuff is better for you. And it's gonna be probably cheaper for you in the long run. Also, store versus national brands. Um, you wanna look and see if they're the same thing. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, every once in a while you look at a brand that is cheaper and it isn't the same thing. So you just wanna make sure that it is. And uh, it might not matter. And a lot of times, people say that they taste exactly the same. So, here's another question. How much less do store brands cost compared to national brands? So if you're going to buy your crackers, if you buy your Ritz crackers, compare something that's not on sale to You're going to compare something like a Ritz cracker to like a store brand that looks exactly the same, but it has the less ink on the box. Do you think you're going to save 5 to 8%? Do you think you're going to save 10 to 15 percent? 15 to 30 percent, run place. And 50 to 75 percent, lower the It is, my friends are running a play. Look at that, we got winners in the back. It is 15 to 30 percent less to buy the store brand stuff than the national brand. So, tonight, without further ado, we're going to start on our demo game. we got a couple of questions that come up in there, so keep your eye back here for a few things. But we're going to start with Miss Laughlin. She's going to make our recipe tonight for our first one. Mine needs to get started first so that it can cook simmer for about 20 minutes or so. And so I'm going to turn your attention to, um, to the front where we have our Table. A beautiful table. I have my PowerPoints in the back. Let's see if I can get young lady who helped me stock shelves earlier. In the classroom, we come to visit. What is it that we use to help you learn about the food so that are the best choices for your body? Do you remember what symbol we use? Does this look familiar? Okay. Yes, it's called the plate or my plate, okay? And my plate is our guide to good eating. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. It should be like this. Yes, um, it's our guide to good eating, but for you meal makers, it can also help you plan meals um, that include all of the different food groups that our body needs so that they are varied and they are proportional and balanced among all the food groups on the plate, okay? So the first recipe that um, I'm going to make for you is black bean soup. Does anybody know what major nutrient black beans provide? Anyone? Any of the adults? My friend? Protein? Protein is correct. So our soup is going to help you meet this portion, this requirement that your body needs every day, so protein requirement. And not only is it an important part of my plate, and this plate reminds us that we need to fill um, a quarter of our plates with lean and healthy um, both vegetable and animal um, sources of protein every day. Protein is also an important building block for many um, parts of our body, like your muscles, your bones, yeah, and even your skin and your blood. OK? 
Okay. So, using beans tonight for our recipe, would that be an animal protein or a plant protein that we're using? Does it come from animals or does beans plant. come from plants? Plants. Plants. Yeah. You guys are right. You are so smart and you are remembering so much from our lessons. But So plant proteins are not just for vegetarians. They're a nice, um, healthy alternative for all of us to use. We don't have to plan to use meat or seafood every single night. All of us can benefit by having one or two meals or more a week using a plant source of protein. Why are they good? First of all, they're naturally low in that saturated fat, the kind that can get stuck in our blood vessels. Okay. They also have plenty of that fiber we saw. You want to look for things that are high in fiber. Um, that keeps you feeling fuller, longer, and also helps keep your digestive tract nice and healthy. Uh, and my favorite part of using plant proteins as an alternative once in a while is they're inexpensive. They're cheap. They're a really good source of protein for your body and they're very inexpensive. So without further ado, we're going to um, make a black bean soup for you tonight. When you go to buy beans, do any of you already use beans? on a regular basis at all in your cooking? That's uh, awesome. I will be still um, that's awesome. We are trying to convince, we do have a little question um, on our PowerPoint asking you how many pounds of beans do you think the average person consumes okay. in a year? Dry beans. Dry beans, okay? We got 3.25 pounds, that's our library. We got baby hands in the air for 0.14 pounds. 7.2 pounds for people around the place. And we got 0.26 pounds for people who have worked before. Remember, these are dry beans. How much do you think people in the United States? Think You're thinking of low, 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 low to floor? 7.2? Wow! 7.2 pounds. But, however, however, that's relatively low considering we have no trouble consuming per person about 133 pounds of sugar in a year, okay? So, we would like to reverse those numbers a little bit and get people okay. thinking about um, using plant sources of protein such as beans um, in your cooking. Um, when you go to the store, um, we mentioned dry beans in our PowerPoint question. Dry beans come in usually like a little cellophane bag. And the only thing about using dry beans is you have to think a little bit ahead because a lot of them, with the exception of lentils and split peas, need to be soaked previously to cooking with them. So you need to maybe do that the day before, the night before. With a pound of beans, you want to put them in an airtight pot, a pot with a lid or an airtight container, one pound with 10 cups of water. Put them in the fridge overnight, and then they will be ready to use in your recipe the next day. However, you can also choose to use canned beans. They're already cooked, and they're ready to use with just a quick um, rinse. Okay, And there are frozen beans, too. With both canned and frozen beans, you just want to check that nutrition facts label again, though, first. You might want to look for, they have uh, no added salt versions, no added sodium versions of beans out there. Many canned products in general, including beans and frozen foods, may have added um, high fat sources. Yes, I will turn that on in a minute. It's going to get warm, okay? Um, they sometimes have high fat sauces, and they've added a lot of salt. So you want to check your nutrition facts label. You want to look at the ingredients and make sure that all you're getting in your package is beans and nothing else but beans, okay? So we are going to start our recipe by turning on the skillet just a little bit. Yep, just watch the kids with this just so you want to get We are going to use, and uh, we chose um, a no added sodium uh, canned bean to use tonight. They're already cooked and ready to go. This is two cans of black beans that have been drained and rinsed. So the next dish we're going to make, and this is one of my favorites, we've done this twice in um, our cooking nights. Uh, it's called Mediterranean Couscous Salad. And you can actually serve this salad. The salad is hot or cold, so it's really nice. You've got leftovers from the evening, you can have it cold the next day.